Reach down between your legs, take off a spring. No, not that one. <laughs> if you can, try to keep it balanced uh, on the resistance level. The reach. Stretch back. Not bad. I want you to reach for me from your lower back. Now keep reaching for me. There you go. So she feels it's the same thing. It's lengthening the lower back, connecting the arms to the lower back. And you see that beautiful line she has here? This is the same line you want in your shirt box. Next, the twist. Straighten your legs and twist to the right. Twist, 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 twist. And come in. You can spot them a little bit here. Straighten and twist to the left. And come in. Let's take the hands out of it and go here. So we take some of this interpretation out. Twist to the right. Twist, lift from your back and twist, 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 twist. And come in. One more time. Good. Force it. And come in. Bring your hands forward, five circles. Bend your knees. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five. Out to the sides. You know, can also do this uh, last two, your reach and your twist with arm weights. You can give them rows one and two pound arm weights, and if they had a weaker arm or scoliosis just in the one arm, give them a weight going back and forth so you strengthen the back and the obliques of that side. Okay. Let's step off and let's do um, chest expansion. So with this equipment, I'm making choices on exercises that are classical, and I'm skipping the ones that are going to bother me. <laughs> or you, they're going to bother you. Yes. Okay. Okay, we still have it on the same two springs. On your knees, face the back of the reformer and grab your straps. Okay, classical chest expansion, the feet are behind the carriage. Stomach tight. So you put your hands in the loops. Let's try it there. That's one of the reasons why we use more weight. I'm going to spot them just to make sure they don't lift your head up there. Fall. Good. Inhale, pull back. Squeeze the shoulders. Stretch the head one way. Stretch the neck the other way. Center and release. Two more times. So your language, the word stretch is a bigger word than turn your head. Stretch means how far can I go? And I'm going to measure how far does she turn to one side and how far does she turn to the other side. Is that just laziness or does she actually have an impediment? Reach behind you, add a spring. So they've been on two very strong springs. One of the reasons in classical we do low reps is we do high resistance. So if I was going to lower the resistance, I would increase the reps. Okay, move forward to your knees or against the shoulder rests. We're just going to modify it on the thigh stretch. Choke it up like a chariot. Stomach in. Just lean back in a thigh stretch. Don't go all the way and come up, do three. This exercise I prefer to do on the Cadillac. It's safer. One more time. And that's enough. Step off. That felt good, huh? Fabulous. Okay. Being a different person after that. <laughs> after that one exercise. Are you moving with me? <laughs> I will, I will, I will. San Diego. It's like, I'm not sure I can do snow this winter. I'll do San Diego. It's important um, if you look at this as an art form, because it's a science and it's an art form that you'd be with someone who knows the craft of it. Like if in normal days, even in the 80s when I was learning, you were in the studio, even in Joe's studio, you were in there 10 years before you were allowed to teach. You learned the work. The work was in your body. You knew the work and how it felt and how it worked. And then they said, oh, go give someone the leg springs. Oh, go spot their feet on the footwork. And then you learned how to use your hands. It was an apprenticeship situation, just as if you were a painter, a sculptor, you know, any artisan, you would, you would study with your teacher and then you'd study your martial arts and then they'd say, you go teach the white belts. So it was this coming up through the ranks sort of thing where the teacher would share all their information, all their accents, all the different bodies, how to fix the equipment. Now everybody sort of buys their stuff and they're left alone. And we love this work. So it's good to have be with someone who has more experience and who can... Uh, uh, make you um, change and give you the information to inspire you. All right, so now here we run into a situation because we don't have long straps. Oh, or are those long straps? Those are long straps. Let's grab them. What do you think? 
No, lowest one. Here we go. All right. She happens to have long straps, which is great. Most people with balanced body equipment don't have them because they have adjustable ropes. So this is just two, because she's. Let's give her. Let's give her. Uh, she's going to do circles and frogs while you guys do long straps. Okay. First of all, when you have a lot of different straps in your studio. From machine to machine, even balanced body, even garage, has changed the lengths of their straps. So always make sure you have two that are the same size, the same length, because they'll make different lengths, and also they'll put on different size swivel hooks or, or um, even D rings will be different sizes. In garage, they have different sizes. Some are an inch and a quarter. Some are an inch and a half. Because if you're trying to decide if there's a weaker side or a shorter side, you want your equipment to not be variable. So in the classical, this would be leather, this would be a loop, and this would be a, for your hands only. So the long strap is going to go through the loop for your long strap exercises. If you do have ropes, they, they expect you to change them, which is fine, but nobody does. And everybody is doing these exercises and they're bringing their feet in here for long straps. Do you see the difference in putting your foot in this strap and putting your foot in that strap? It's pretty remarkable. Remarkable? That makes a difference in hurting someone's back, hurting, tearing their hamstrings, or not getting any effect of the exercise. So in the beginning uh, classical work, and I hope I'm not confusing you, um, we didn't do short spine today because of the back situation. In the classical program, it comes at the end. Um, in the, in the uh, beginning, you would give the person, instead of short spine, you would give them legs in the straps. So they learn their circles and their frogs. In the advanced, it comes at the very end as a, as a reward. So I'm going to have you just do circles and frogs, and you guys are going to do long spine. But first, we've just come off the apparatus, if you can follow this note. While you're off the apparatus, you set your trick up for the next trick. Because corkscrew comes next and then comes last one. Now let's give her a set too. She's going to do just the circles and the frogs. And your, think of this as your operating table. And if you're operating on someone, you wouldn't want to walk over to the other side of the room and get your stuff. So your long straps should be kept if you're going to do those exercises. And then make sure the gears on the outside. All right, so everybody on your backs. We're going to do corkscrew first. No, no stress yet. So the, the note was you got off the reformer, and when you got off the reformer, you set the trick up for the next trick, because you're already off. And we're going to do no bar, no bar. Legs up. Everybody should do corkscrew. Nobody should not do corkscrew, legs up. But here's how you do it for somebody who's uh, not as so healthy. Relax your feet. I like to hold on here, it's nice. Open your elbows, stomach in. All right? Open your feet a little bit, squeeze all this, squeeze this, relax this. Make a small circle to the right and stop in the middle. Make a small circle to the left. By touching her heels, I can feel she doesn't have obliques. Because she goes to do the exercise, and I feel a lot of air in there. You feel that air? So this is as small as you want to go. So this angle here, if it was straight up at 90 degrees, it's only going about 10 or 15 degrees to each side. If she does this exercise, she will fix her back and strengthen her back because most people don't have obliques. And all you're going to do is that small. Okay? And then it gets bigger. And in a, in a normal, healthy, evolved life, it would go to 45 degrees. Here, here, and here. So Ramon would say if it's a clock, you're doing 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. Hey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and 3 o'clock, 
6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. It seems like the, these people need it. Let's see her. That looks good. Just relax this. We make it like a circle. So first learn the angles. And don't let the heels move. If the heels shift, the hips shift. So everybody can do this at whatever angle they can do it at. And they would do this for about three months before I ever took them into a full corkscrew, or before I took them in, definitely before I took them into any control balance off, to build the inner, uh, inner obliques. Legs up, stomach in. Feel your elbows open, feel your wings on your back. Let's do uh, the tick-tock. Keep your right elbow down. Pull your right ab in to bring your legs back. Legs are just a weight. There you go. Yeah. And keep it at that 90 degree mark. Use this ab and pull it back. Good. You can see when they do it. You know how it feels. Use your stomach to pull it back. And then I'll give it to them as homework. All right. And then corkscrew number three. And the beginner or the person with the situation can take breaks. And then she can repeat the exercise. No. Pause for one second. It's important we connect all the dots. That takes a while. But right here, both legs up, we have this double leg circle, right? If her back is really bad, what can we do? And what is it? It's a single leg circle. It's a single leg circle. And then, which this is more inner thigh, outer thigh, working at range of motion. She needs a lot of correction because she pops. Her neck pops, her ribs pop. Yeah, you're going to see great improvement though. So watch my language. I'm not good, good, oh that's good, that's good. I'm like, you need this? And she's like, yeah, I know I need it. And I go, and you're going to see great improvement. And she smiled. It was a relief to her. So there's hope, oh, all right. So the type of uh, encouragement you're giving someone, but it's also very technical. It comes from experience. You'll have it when you have your clients. You'll have it in your own body. I completely remember the first time I did corkscrew. I went, what's that? There's like just air in there. There's nothing but water and air down there. And then I felt through the weeks this band get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And then that gives you the control to do other tricks off. It takes time to build, though. So don't push too far. You're going to repeat corkscrew number three on the reformer. Stomach in. Circle to the right. Come around. Put your stomach in and push up in a diagonal four vertebras and hold it. Roll down. I'm helping. Circle around. Pull your right ab in. Push up four vertebras and hold it. And down. Good girl. This is perfect to just work on yourself. You don't need to because you're not going to hold it. Circle around the stomach and push up that with four vertebrae and hold. See right there where I'm going to the screen. Yes. So it's very, very specific. Keep this down. And push up. And you don't have it on that side. And she doesn't have it on that side. So we're able to, by working a small, well, she feels it. Very nice. And I can't explain it to you. It depends uh, what your gift is. And we like to encourage everybody to have their own gifts, whether it's your visual. With me, it's my hands. If I put my hands on you, I feel. So it depends. Oh, and other people have an intellectual understanding of calories and dollars. And um, keep me on this hand. That's a whole other stuff. I didn't get my coffee. Yeah. Starbucks. <laughs> Um, so wait, where was I at? Okay, so this oblique exercise, right? Circles, very small circles. It's not yoga. It's not like you're going over here and just flopping and taking a stretch. It's a strength exercise, it's not a stretch exercise, that will build, you may never go further, but anyone who has unstable pelvis, sacroiliac problems, uh, scoliosis, any of those things, the band here will stabilize them. So this is a really good exercise before you do anything bigger. Now you two are going to do, and you can, you're, it's okay to rest or it's okay to repeat. You rest, 
repeat the exercise. You rest, repeat the exercise. So it's important for those of you who have studios or are going to be doing, uh, you know, math studios or going to be doing duets, that you can do a split level. And if you tell this is what you're doing at your level, and this is what you're doing at your level. So I don't want her to dumb down, and I don't want to push her to her level. Each person should be doing their own, uh, their own level of, of where they're going to see improvement at and not get hurt and not get discouraged and not be told they're wrong. The language is real important. Okay, that being said, let's prep to control balance off. We're not going to do it, we're just going to prep. Legs straight up. Push up, all the way up. Not you, you can just do your... Okay. I want the, the left leg to go find the outside of the machine and come up. The other leg goes down and finds the outside of the machine. Outside, 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 outside. There you go. And up. She's not upside down, but she thinks she is. The foot goes down, finds the outside of the former, and up. <laughs> My hands are sliding off. And one more time. And up. And roll down. So for the full uh, control balance off, we take them out of the headrest. A lot of people, I just saw them demonstrating on Facebook. You're so negative. Hello. Take your head out of the headrest when you do control balance off, please. A lot of neck problems. I hurt my neck and Pilates. Well, you were in the wrong position for the trick. For the prep, you don't have to slide off. This is the same as in your mat. So when you're teaching Pilates to beginners, there's a difference between a beginner in their body, like they have no muscles, they have no mind-body control, they don't know their left from their right, and they're geeks, or poor, or whatever. And someone who has a really great body, but they're new to Pilates. Those are two different things. So there was never any uh, beginning and immediate in the math that came from uh, certification courses, having to classify which exercises they were going to sell you that month. It really came to what shape are you in and what shape are you in. So um, you, can give, you can give beginners more difficult exercises if they're already athletes, yoga people, gymnasts, dancers, or you build their foundation up. And it, it's just like building a house. You go, oh man, first I gotta lay the cement, then I gotta put in the wood, then I gotta put in the drywall, and it takes time, and that's all it, that's all it is, it's just time. All right, now um, let's put our feet in the straps for the long spine. And and the beginner who's not going to do long spine is just going to do feet in the straps. Push back. I have her on two springs and the, the hardware should go on the outside. Every once in a while, if you don't, it can click and one can open up the other hook and they fall out. So we'll just take the hardware to the outside of the room. Okay. So the beginner with the situation is just going to do her frogs in circles. Shoulders down, ribs down, stomach and butt tight. Just stretch and bend. And there's nothing wrong with increasing the reps with the beginner. You guys aren't doing that, though. You guys aren't beginners. Let's knock a couple in. <laughs> OK, so a um, couple things. When you do have this variable resistance, sometimes it's nice to have that as a teacher's spot. Let's just see. Bring your legs up and over. Come up onto your shoulders. Open your legs hip distance. How big are your hips? They're this big. These bones right there. Open your feet that distance. Now pull with your feet and squeeze with your seat. I can give her more resistance here. Nice, Jen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice. I felt that in my stomach. And you can do circles. So on the, on the bounce spot, you can actually add like a yellow if you want more assist. Uh, Come up to your to your over your shoulders. 
that open your feet with distance to what? Reach with your big toes. If I can either hold the straps for you, is it too heavy? Here would be a place if you added like a yellow for someone. Mm -hmm. It depends on which strings that they may have to bring strings, then it would be really used. You either hold the straps to give them more resistance or add more resistance. Okay. Nice, Jen. Did you go both ways? No. Bruce. How big would you like your butt to be? <laughs> I want you to make your circles the size you want your butt to be. Take these two fingers here and put them on your hips in front, the hip bones. Pull your stomach in between those two points. Relax your toes. Drop your ribs. So it's knees, calves, heels. Pull together your knees, calf, there you go. Drop your ribs and pull it in. There, your trunk shouldn't move at all. So the beginner needs to work circles and frogs. We give that to her early in the program. You can do circles and frogs now. By the time they build up to uh, long spine, which is an intermediate advanced -like exercise, and you have to have a healthy back, circles and frogs would be like dessert. Now here, you can go wider if you want, because we're not sculpting you out. It's a release. So it depends if it's a sculpting exercise. As a beginner, I would give her circles and frogs, and then I would give her a short spine when she has control. And here, by the time you get to advance after long spine, which is a difficult exercise, it's just a relaxation. It's no longer sculpting. If I wanted to sculpt out, I'd put them on the Cadillac with my heavy springs. And then I would scope them out that way. Okay? Uh, one more note about long spine and what was it? Um, if you don't have the straps, take your feet out. Two notes about long spine. One, there are people who have a back condition who shouldn't do short spine. Who can do long spine? Two different exercises. So in short spine, you have the back rounded, it's, it's compressed, it's flexed, and you've got resistance on it, right? You've got the, the weight of the body coming down, and you're rounded, you're flexed, and you've got resistance on it. That's not good for some disc problems. However, long spine is not compressed, it's extended. So first you would teach, the, if you have a Cadillac, first you would teach that exercise on the Cadillac with heavier springs. So the body learns the exercise somewhere else. Oh, this is what I'm doing. My butt's in the air and I'm pulling with my feet. So that by the time it becomes more difficult in a group class or with the resistance that's not supported right, the body knows it. So some exercises can't do short spine, they can do long spine, which is interesting. The other thing is if you're in a group class and you don't have, what do you do, jackknife? If you don't have the right straps, it's a different exercise. Come up. But pretend you have it and come down without the straps. So we're just teaching it without the straps. Much harder. <laughs> it's considered a different exercise, though. And the same thing, the same thing, come down. We didn't do jackknife or overhead. But the same thing. Sometimes the straps are too long. Sometimes the resistance is too light. The resistance is what gives you the support to do the exercise. So you would have been giving a beginner, going back to the beginner, you would have been giving them 20 reformer exercises and 10 mat exercises. Roll-ups, roll-overs, single leg circle, series of five, and they would be getting the strength to do the more uh, advanced exercises on the reformer. Did you get that note, Rose? So you would give them 20 reformer exercises, maybe 10 mat exercises as opposed to 40, 50 reformer exercises. So if I would already know you can't do jackknife. And we would have been practicing that on the mat. And very hard with the straps if they're not right. But you can do jackknife holding on to here. So let's just, it's a little bit out of order. It would have came after your hundreds. But let's just make that the note being using this as, using, not using your springs or your reform or your ropes to do the same exercise. So your jackknife is your rollover and your jackknife. Push up and then come down. 
All right? So if you had a group class, same thing. You couldn't spot everybody. You know they can't do it, but they can do that. They can hold on. Right? They can hold on. Same thing. Um, this is not rocket science. It's an art form. It's like cooking, right? So someone's left you the formula on how to make lasagna, right? But it's not going to make a difference if you decide to make your meatballs first and then cook your noodles. Or you can change a little bit once you know what ingredients you're supposed to use. So that being said, even though this is a very classical class, we're talking about in, in, in these situations, going into the non-classical studios, she's got a group here of varying levels. So you're not going to be going, oh, now we're going to do snake and twist and all these exercises that are A, advanced, and B, require spot and are dangerous because they're gymnastics. But you can use the reformer while you have them here to do some other things. So I like these handles, legs up. So while I have her here, I can do her uh, series of five. I could do her both knees in, both legs out. I could do her single leg straight. I could do her double leg straight. Okay, because those are all really safe exercises, just a smaller range of motion. So you can take that mat and put it here, because this is your mat. Because sometimes people can't work springs the whole time. So you can go in and out of your routine. I like to tell people, those of you in foreign places, um, I like to show the voice. So the Pilates is our song. We have our song. That's our Pilates song. And now I'm your new coach. You know, I'm Blake, or <laughs> the new ones now, you know, Alicia Keys. And I have a, a new talent in front of me. You know, some of these singers are 16 years old. They've never had a coach before. And that coach says, for your body, I want you to do it like this. I want you to sing in this key, in this range. I want you to go into a riff. Da -da 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 -da, and then come back to your melody. So that's what we're doing here. We have our song, and then right here, your body or your body, because she can't do snake and twist, I'm going to give her a little bit of series of four, and then come back to the melody. It's all good. There's no, there is a plotty police, but he's not here. And it's not like, oh, I messed the order up. I'm going to be like, you know, in bloody hell. Um, the order, the master, all orders are put together from memorization. In martial arts, you have a kata. And the masters, thousands of years together, put together the block and the punch and the counter so you would remember the exercises. So the sequence has already been decided. Oh yeah, now we're, on, now we're on our stomach, now we're on our back, now we're sitting, now we're standing. But that's so you can remember it by memory. And then if you need to, for some reason that you decide is, is intelligent to change it, fine. One thing we don't do, just for uh, simplicity, is we don't uh, get off the reformer. I mean, we might go to the ladder barrel, do the swan or the horseback or, you know, grasshopper. But you, you do the reformer and you finish it and you go to something else. You don't, like, do the reformer, stop in the middle, go Cadillac, chair, pedipole, and then go back to the reformer. That's bad efficiency. What you're going for is efficiency of motion. You're going for, the most important thing you're going for is development of the willpower. We're developing our willpower. We're getting control over something we don't have control over. I have no control over the election. I have no control over the price of gas. I have no control over my lover. I'm going to control my knees. Something I can control. Okay, so it's development of your willpower. It's the development of a symmetrical body to prevent suffering, aging. So everything within the principles will give you uh, the information you need and don't think like, oh, this is, you know. Get rid of all the paranoia, all the plotty paranoia. Let's get rid of the perverts and the paranoia. Can we put this on CNN? Okay, next, step off. Let's throw in the mermaid here just because um, it's done so wrongly. Wrongly, it's not a good word. Very <laughs> Trump word. Wrongly. Don't go stupid on me now. <laughs> Put your tomorrow up. Pretend you have one. See, if you only have one, you have to worry about which way it's going to be. And then
and one spring. So the reformer comes in these little clusters, right? Like short box, one, two, three, four, five is a cluster. Stomach massage, one, two, three, four, five is a cluster. These spine exercises are all a cluster. So your long spine, your corkscrew, your snake, your twist, your mermaid, your side stretch, those are all your weird spine exercises. So you can either say to your teacher, oh, I really want to go over that weird spine cluster, or if someone has a back situation, leave out that cluster. If someone has a knee situation, I can leave out the knee cluster and the stomach massage cluster. So when you're trying to remember, I know in my order, which Ramana changed, uh, the short box used to come after the second long box, and then she moved it forward. So I'd memorize one order, and now there's another order. So these little spine things, one more time, it's the, the balance control, the snake and twist, the corkscrew, uh, the long spine, and the mermaid are all spine exercises as opposed to, I'm pushing with my legs or my arms, okay? And so that's a good review, and it's also a good elimination. Okay, this exercise was called the side stretch. There are no mermaids in Pilates. He was in Mönchengladbach. On your side, face that way. But when I go to Denmark, I, 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 I hope to see the little mermaid. Okay, classical mermaid. There's only one leg. Both shins go against him. No. Right? Her square, the, sh the hand is slightly forward of the square. The purpose of the exercise is to strengthen the shoulder. Bring this arm up, stretch, shoulder down, push out, push the carriage out, and come up. You're okay on the back? Does it bother you? First try it, or lose your hands, and then if it bothers you, don't do it, you don't do it. Pinch your ribs, push out, and up. I want the shoulder blade on the trunk. I want the ribs pinched. No rounding. Push it. Shoulder down. Shoulder down. You drop the shoulder just a little bit. A little bit lighter. Okay, okay. 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 The counter stretch, hold on here, bring this arm up. And then I'm stretching. And twist down. Let me give you a stretch, huh? Bring your arm back up. So you feel what it's like. I grab her, I stretch her. And then twist down, bring this here. Bend your elbows, bring all the air out. Other side. She said she got drunk last night and threw it back. I missed the story. <laughs> <laughs>